Hello out there in YouTube land. Uh, <clears throat> who turned this camera on? Uh, hi, uh, today is February 25th, 2018. And uh, yeah, I, th I think I'm coming to the end of the Pet Peeve series. Not completely the end, because there are still going to be updates that I'm going to do to some of these videos, but you got to admit, 100 is a nice round number to quit on. And I've got some other video projects that I want to channel my energies into. As a matter of fact, I've already begun editing one of them, and I'm trying to make it really amazing and perfect and powerful. So, with an eye towards that, I think probably the pet peeves I'm going to step back from for a little while. Some of you, I know that's going to disappoint, uh, and I apologize, but uh, I really never expected I would shoot a hundred full entries plus this makes like 144 videos in the playlist total, so nearly 150. Uh, a few of those were older that I recorded before and I added into the playlist, but still, that's a lot of videos. So, um, got you know just a couple of things that I want to touch on today. Hey, good news, Diamond Select Toys has announced that they are going to fix the uh, little sign uh, that's going to go on the uh, firehouse facade, uh, build a diorama that comes with the, the, the uh, Ghostbusters 2 and real Ghostbusters figures, but they are not going to uh, address the uh, name tape issue on the torso from what I most recently read. Uh, and uh, a lot of people are saying they don't like that Ray Stantz sculpt because it looks like Alfred E. Newman from Mad Magazine. On to the pet peeves. I do still have some notes here for certain topics. So this will be like a mega pet peeve uh, video. And it'll sort of be like, you know, when your daddy found you smoking a cigarette, he stuck you in the closet with a whole carton to finish. So yeah, we're going out with a bang with a lot of pet peeves in this video. So enjoy. Over on the YouTube comments, Story is Everything wanted to know, did Winston ever get a locker? I have heard this question before, but really I don't remember it ever popping up until the Lego Firehouse came out. Obviously I've got uh, the second and third stories uh, taken off uh, for clarity here. But inside there they put lockers for Spingler, Stance, and Vinkman. And a lot of fans were complaining about that. Like, Why didn't they have a locker for Winston? Why didn't they have a locker for Winston? Okay, it's one specific toy have you ever gone back to the movie and looked to see where Winston's locker might be? And that becomes its own pet peeve for me because in a day and age of the internet and social media, it seems like fewer and fewer people are going back and checking the source material. They're just repeating the trendy thing that someone said and not going back and actually studying the hard facts. Uh, it's becoming like a a second generational um, complaint. It's like, well, did you, did you notice that for yourself or did you just hear somebody talk about it and you've adopted it as your thought? Have you looked at it? Have you, have you gone back and watched the movie since you read that? Little things like that it has sort of been what this series is combating. If you'll look at the scene when Peck and the cop and Con Ed arrive, you can see at least seven lockers against the wall. They're not all together, and there's not four of them together where you see the ones for Egon, uh, Peter, and Ray. But there are more lockers than there are Ghostbusters. So nobody was hurting for a locker when they joined in, okay? If you go back to the LA23 website and look up some of these uh, archival photos, including the two or three that are on uh, Peter's office wall, and some others, you'll see that that firehouse in LA where they were filming, at one point staffed 29 firefighters and 10 horses. So they're not hurting for facilities. They, they've got bunks, they've got lockers, they've got everything they need in that building. So don't worry about it. And if you really, really don't like your Lego set, customize it. That's what I did. 
Now, technically, I began this one before LEGO announced theirs, and I've revised it two or three times since, but I did incorporate some elements from the official set afterwards. So I've got a bigger office for Peter, a bigger desk for Janine, I've got the cop, and I've got Con Ed in there at the moment, and I went on BrickLink after the real set came out, and I ordered one, two, three, four lockers for the guys. So there you go. Winston got him a locker if you just want to spend a little bit of extra money. Go on Lego Digital Designer and design your own firehouse and make sure it's got as many lockers as you want. Put seven in there. I don't care. Uh, but, you know, there's, there's ways around it. Um, the toy isn't always going to be perfect to the film. So, but if it bothers you, do something. Or here's another little pet peeve. People keep thinking they see other actors in Ghostbusters. The first one I remember was people said that the guy with the headphones on who's wheeling out the big piece of medical equipment from the lab is Jim Belushi. Looks nothing like Jim Belushi to me. He's too short. He's, he's not heavy enough. Doesn't look like him at all, but some website said it was and people kept repeating it. In case you're wondering about that uh, still frame of Jim Belushi dressed up as a Ghostbuster, it was a skit from 1984 called The Ghostbusters Show, and he was like a local cable access kind of a guy that loved Ghostbusters. He was sort of like the proto-Ghostbusters fan. His name was The character's name was Chad Webb. He only made one appearance on Saturday Night Live. And a video of this used to be up at Proton Charging, and now I can't get the link to work anymore. So all I had was that one still to show you. And uh, I am investigating. I'm going to try to get that uh, piece of video like uh, resurrected somehow so that people can see it again, because I thought it was a great skit. Um, but the, the quote that's in there is he has a phone-in call who says, hey, what about, and this is in 1984, this is how prescient it was. A phone-in caller says, what about the rumor that they're going to recast Ghostbusters on the next movie? And Chad Webb says, replacing the original Ghostbusters, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard of. So, 1984, man. Jim Belushi, way to go. And then uh, someone thought that the paramedic at the end of the movie was Burt Reynolds. I don't think it's Burke Reynolds. It didn't look like him to me. Actually, I thought the female paramedic looked a lot like Andrea Martin that was on SCTV with Rick Moranis. It's not her, but, you know, she worked for Ivan Reitman. She was in Cannibal Girls. Recently, someone asked and thought it was uh, here on, on this playlist, uh, said they thought Brian Doyle Murray was Marty, the guy putting up the Ghostbusters Incorporated sign over the door. And showed pictures from 1984 of what Brian Doyle Murray looked like then. And he was like, oh, okay, you're right. It's not him. And Wade Haddock reminded me of this one the other day, and I had forgotten. Uh, I heard this for the first time back in, like, college. So somewhere between 88 and 92, I was told that the little girl at the birthday party in Ghostbusters at the Tavern on the Green when Lewis is up against the glass was singer Debbie Gibson. Apparently there's two girls visible and she's the one that's further from camera and she's got the pink bow in her hair. It's so tiny in the frame, I don't know how we're supposed to know that's Debbie Gibson and I don't know where the source of this claim comes from. Did she say it in an interview or something? So if you know where that came from, please let me know because it's been bugging me for a while. Also, people seem to think that Chevy Chase and Robin Williams were in Ghostbusters, but... <laughs> Oh, well, that's odd. Hmm. And here's a little pet peeve of mine. I don't have an autograph from Ivan Reitman. I tried back in 1989. I found addresses for their offices, and I mailed off three letters. I got a response from Joe Medjuk. I got a response from Michael Gross. From Ivan Reitman, I got a response from his secretary, who sent me a pre-printed 8x10 of the cast of uh, Ghostbusters 2 with all their signatures already printed on it. It wouldn't bother me so much, except I tried again via Ghost Core, no response, and then you watch Ghost Heads and it's like, 
Okay, he can shoot a wedding engagement video for somebody, but he can't sign a piece of paper and stick it in the mail to me. Also in 1989, I did get uh, Rick Moranis' autograph through the mail, so that was kind of cool. The photo wasn't from Ghostbusters, it was from uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. But I put it with my uh, Little Shop of Horrors autograph collections. Speaking of Rick Moranis, here's a pet peeve. When um, the Keymaster comes to the uh, gatekeeper's uh, door and the door swings open, uh, actually, we were discussing this the other day in something, and people were talking about, oh, wow, the key master can finally open a door, you know, and I thought, no, because she's in the apartment, and she looks towards the door, and it opens. I think the gatekeeper opened the door, but that's, up, that's certainly up for debate. But when the door opens, and he's standing there, watch the chain uh, on the door facing as it moves back and forth. As you can tell that the blast damage effect to the apartment was sprayed onto that while the chain was stationary. And as the chain moves, you see the unpainted chain shape in the paint uh, as it kind of swings back and forth there. So, little pet peeve. One, something I noticed years ago and I can never unsee when I watch the movie. I thought this was kind of neat. In the novelization by Mueller, uh, there's a, a scene where uh, Vinkman goes on The Letterman Show and says that the most frightening thing he's seen since he founded Ghostbusters was running into Larry Bud Melman in the green room before the show. Larry Bud Melman was in the music video for the busboys cleaning up the town. That's pretty cool.